Tá? Não é muito técnico, técnico. I think it's all that loop like name, which is kind of scary. Okay, so now the other side of that obviously is the complex policy. So we have this big long list, we have a, a complex technical solution now that has to deal with that. It's cost us a bucket load of money because we've had to go to our register, we've had to build it ourselves, and we've had to say, listen, you need to make a whole heap of modifications in order to fit us in. Okay, that's costly and it's time consuming. So that's right at the other end of the spectrum. Once again, oh. Thank you, Don. You're working beautifully. <laughs> okay, so what are we hoping for here? Well, we're after obviously a balance that's right for you. And that balance is an appropriate policy, appropriate technical solution, fit for purpose. Hooray! We're there. Okay? So this is what we're aiming for. These are the questions you need to ask. So what is appropriate policy that's, and understand how that's going to impact the technology? Okay. So what is a registry? Oops, what did I do? Oh, that's right. What is a registry solution? Um, this is kind of complex, but let's get an understanding of it because now we're going to start dissecting about what we're giving out, what we're building, what we're doing. So let's look at it real quick. So we've got the registry application itself, the bit that does all the work. Then you've got your hardware and your third-party software. So you've got your storage, your servers, uh, you've got your software like Oracle, maybe Red Hat, whatever it runs on. Then you've got your DNS, your primary and secondary name service. Then you've got your technical management, the people doing the, the work within the office that are managing the technical environment. Then the regulatory body and the customer support and the registrar liaisons and the marketing team. This is everything that goes into running a registry. And we're going to talk about how we can give out bits and pieces of this. Because it's not all one, one solution. It's not just the registry software that you're giving out. You need to understand what your own capabilities are and which, which parts of these you can tick off and say, yeah, we can do this or we can't, we need to get someone else to help us. Or we need to ramp up in order to get there. So the registry system, that, that first column, can we do it in-house? Do we go and select the vendor? Or do we uh, use an open source system? All of which are very viable and, and certainly uh, usable. But it all depends on what your expertise are. If you're going to do open source, do you have the ability to be able to work with it? Do you have staff developers that can take that open source and make it fit the, the uh, policy requirements that you have? What about the location of the registry system? Is it okay for you to have your registry system managed outside of your country? Are there sovereignty issues there? Do you need to have it managed all the infrastructure within our country? That is obviously a, a massive decision to make. It's something you need to decide early because it's going to impact how you're going to conduct the tender should you go in that direction. What are the features required? Do you need a reserve list um, uh, algorithm that can run? Do you need a whitelisting or blacklisting of who is? You know, what, what are the different features that you, you particularly require for your, uh, your uh, registry? And what are the proven capabilities? So, the next column was hardware and third party software. The technical infrastructure, what is the local availability of us being able to get hold of this hardware? If we decide that we want to house it on our hardware, so we're going to get someone else's software, we're going to put it on our hardware in our country because that's important. Well, can we get the service here? Can we get the, uh, does the data centre have the capability in order to, to run the sort of network that we need? Uh, what about the software? Are we able to get local providers who are going to support the third party software? Is, does Oracle work within, our, within our, uh, our country? And if something goes wrong, if one of our servers go down from IBM, does that mean some of them we're going to be able to get a support contract for them to be able to come in? This is mission critical infrastructure, folks. We can't afford to mess around with it. We need to know these answers, or well, know the questions, at least initially. Moving along, DNS, the name service. Um, if we're getting someone else to do them, are there legal arrangements and requirements? What about the data that goes through them? It's a, it's a bit of a buzz thing at the moment within ICANN. The DNS operations, in-house outsourcing, combination of both, once again, sovereignty issues. Is it okay? to have your DNS housed outside of uh, your country. Moving along, technical management. Are we able to train and recruit these people within the country? What are the resources like within our country in order to fill these positions? The transition of existing domain, what are the impacts if we've got a, a legacy system as all of you do? What are the impacts to our existing registrars, our existing registrars and other end users? Is there going to be downtime? We need to think about all this. 